The ligaments of the spine always receives a great deal of attention when we deal about the spine biomechanics. That is because this ligaments in the vertebral column or this ligaments of the spine plays such a great and crucial role in the normal biomechanics and functioning of the spine. They have a role in stability, they have a role in restraining the motion, they have a, more, a role in the extension or the extent of the motion and they have a role in the stability of the intervertebral disc and so on and at the same time any pathologies related to the spine or any pathologies related to the ligaments can result in various problems associated with the spine and thus this topic receives a great deal of attention and this video we discuss about the biomechanics of the ligaments of the we spine. have about the six ligaments starting with anterior longitudinal ligament posterior longitudinal ligament ligamentum flavum interspinous ligament intertransverse ligament and supraspinous ligament need not worry we will simplify it in the most simplified manner possible first one is the longitudinal ligaments and you know that the longitudinal ligaments can be divided into anterior longitudinal ligament ALL and posterior longitudinal ligaments so you know by now what you mean by longitudinal ligaments the ligaments that run in the longitudinal axis of the body or ligaments that runs parallel to or in the longitudinal axis of the body is known as the longitudinal ligaments and we have two sets of longitudinal ligament the anterior longitudinal ligament and the posterior longitudinal ligament for example consider this as the vertebral column and what you have the prominent structure anteriorly that is the body of the vertebral column now a ligament structure a connective tissue structure a thick structure which covers the anterior part of this vertebral column body vertebral columns body is known as the anterior longitudinal ligament what is that it is a ligament that connects or that covers the anterior aspect of the body of the vertebral column that is more important because you know that in the anterior aspect you have the body of the vertebral column so you have a ligament which covers this aspect of the vertebral column and thus we call it as the anterior longitudinal ligament now in this diagram if I am able to if I am trying to label the anterior longitudinal ligament it would come over here this is how the anterior longitudinal ligament but of course they have slight extension into the lateral side also they have a slight extension into the lateral side so anterior longitudinal ligaments are ligaments which lines or which see which is seen in the anterior and lateral or anterolateral part of the vertebral column this is the body of the vertebral column anterolateral aspect of the body of the vertebral column those ligaments are known as the anterior longitudinal ligament where is its origin the origin from the the origin from the sacrum the origin from the sacrum to the second cervical vertebra to c2 they arise from the sacrum to second cervical vertebra that means they pass from this downward part from sacrum to upward that is from caudally to cranially or from lower part to upper part this ligament is lining the spine okay the body of the spine that is the anterior longitudinal ligament of the spine now this anterior longitudinal ligament is in fact made up of two parts or two layers how do you define that one is the superficial layer what is that one is the superficial layer and another is the deep layer of the spine what do you mean by superficial layer which will be which will be it will be more superficial to the body of the spine this one is the deep layer and what do you see the peculiarity of the superficial layer for example if i have different segments of spine like this 
For example, if I have different segment of spine like this, the posterior long, anterior longitudinal ligaments, superficial layer will be covering the entire entire part of the body of the vertebra entire part of the body of the vertebra anterior as well completely they cover different segments whereas if it is a deep one the difference is that they lie in only the adjacent vertebra they are seen only attached to the adjacent vertebra then they are not seen there then they are seen in adjust uh, arranging to the adjacent vertebra Clear? The difference is this one. The anterior longitudinal ligament is having two fibers. One is the superficial fiber which is completely covering the anterior aspect of the body of the vertebra. Whereas the deep fiber which is seen adjacent, attached to adjacent vertebra only. Which is seen attached to the adjacent vertebra only. Clear? The anterior longitudinal ligament runs from the sacrum to second cervical vertebra. The deep layer of the anterior longitudinal ligament is often associated or blended with the structure over here in the vertebral disc. That too in particular the outermost structure. What is that? The annulus fibrosus. So the uh, deep layer is seen in association with the annulus fibrosus of the vertebral column. The deep layer is seen in association with the annulus fibrosus. So what will be one of the function of this anterior longitudinal ligament? We'll see the detailed function later. That is, they give anterolateral stability to the intervertebral disc. Am I right? Because the disc is having a stability form displacing in the anterior and lateral direction that is because of this anterior longitudinal ligaments so they provide anterolateral stability to the intervertebral disc as well as what are these joints between the vertebra known as body of the vertebra what is this joint known as the interbody joints as well as they stabilize the interbody joints as well as from this diagram itself it is clear as well as they stabilize the interbody joints here also you have the anterior longitudinal ligament expanding it like this from here to here so this will be another ligament so this will uh, link or join the interbody joints stabilize the interbody, interbody joints so our discussion about the anterior longitudinal ligament how is it aligned where it is seen what is its orientation what are its deep fibers and superficial fibers what are its function now we need to also understand that uh, when is the time the anterior longitudinal ligament is lengthened and compressed it is seen in anterior as per for example if this my you know, trunk is my vertebral column itself it will be seen in this direction so it will get stretched in extension it will get stretched in extension and when you go for flexion it get compressed it get compressed in flexion and stretched in extension so this ligament is going to restrict extension of the spine this ligament is going to restrict the extension of the spine so three important roles of this ligament one is that they restrict the extension they provide anterolateral because anterolaterally anterolateral stability to the vertebral column in the vertebral disc and also uh, they give stabilization to the inter body joints they are stretched out in extension and limits the extension possible and whereas they are compressed in flexion but they are slack in the normal stance position especially if you have a degenerated disc disease and your disc height is low then the anterior longitudinal ligament will be slack the anterior longitudinal ligament is slack not in the resting position or normal position when in flexion it is not slack it get compressed it get compressed it stretches in the extension now one more some other peculiarities of the anterior longitudinal ligament is that in this region in the lordotic region of the spine that is in cervical region and lumbar region these ligaments are so thick in lordotic region these ligaments are thick whereas in kyphotic region these ligaments are thin so that is another peculiarity of anterior longitudinal ligaments it is thick in the lordotic region whereas thin in the kyphotic region clear 
and also finally there is an, one more point of the anterior longitudinal ligament that is the tensile strength of the anterior longitudinal ligament is so high when it is compared to posterior longitudinal ligament the tensile strength the ability to withstand tension force the ability to withstand tension force is greater for anterior longitudinal ligament than the posterior longitudinal ligament and it is twice that of posterior longitudinal ligament at the lumbar region it is twice that of posterior longitudinal ligament at the lumbar region am i right so these are the important aspects about the anterior longitudinal ligament they can ask you in mcq questions which is the direction of fibers or orientation of anterior longitudinal ligament? it's from sacrum to c2 not from c2 to sacrum which are the two fibers superficial and deep fibers what is the stability of anterior longitudinal ligament they provide andro and post andro lateral stability as well as stability to the inner body joint when it is compressed or when it is stretched it is stretched in extension which movement it restricts it moments uh, restricts the extension right now moving on to the posterior longitudinal ligament the discussion just starts with uh, replacing this a with a p so that, that's so simple actually the posterior longitudinal ligament is why i told you it is simple because it starts from c2 to the sacrum so exactly opposite it starts from c2 to sacrum so you just can you can just forget from sacrum to c2 it starts from c2 to sacrum it is seen in the posterior aspect of the in body of the vertebra it is seen in the posterior aspect of the body of the vertebra it is seen in the posterior aspect of the body of the vertebra and lines from c2 to sacrum lines from c2 to sacrum it is forming the what is this vertebral canon right it is forming the ventral or anterior portion of the vertebral canal it forms the ventral ventral means anterior anterior or ventral portion of the vertebral canal which ligament that is your posterior longitudinal ligament your anterior longitudinal ligament do not have any role with the vertebral canal because it's completely anterior plane so the posterior longitudinal ligament is another longitudinal ligament it runs in longitudinal direction from c2 to sacrum they are forming the anterior margin or the ventral portion of the vertebral canal now this has two fibers right so this also has two fibers they are also fiber deep fiber superficial fiber is having the same function it's going to restrict the it is going to sorry it, it is going to link come different segments together or entire length of the posterior longitudinal ligament whereas the deep fibers are seen attaching to adjacent vertebra so the deep fibers are seen attaching to the active uh, adjacent vertebra deep fibers are seen attaching to the active uh, adjacent vertebra when is the posterior longitudinal ligament is going to be stretched it is going to be stretched in flexion it is going to be stretched in flexion it is going to be slack in extension the exact opposite of anterior longitudinal ligament because you know that this is here this is the posterior aspect in which posterior longitudinal ligament is lined when i go for flexion it is getting stretched and stretched and stretched and this uh, extension and hyper extension goes for its uh, slacking position so this ligament restrict which sort of movement it restricts the flexion of the spine it restricts the flexion of the spine it restricts the flexion of the spine that is a chief feature of the posterior longitudinal ligament and one more thing is that posterior longitudinal ligament is a thin ribbon like structure in region like a lumbar region in regions like a lumbar region the posterior longitudinal ligament is very thin whereas in kyphotic region it is thick exactly opposite to the anterior longitudinal ligament but what is the problem that arises if there is a thin or ribbon like posterior longitudinal ligament especially in the lumbar region because that is where more weight transfer is done for example excessive weight transfer is done to this region and this ligament is very thin so what happens in repetitive flexion and repetitive lifting activity or weight lifting etc there is a chance of posterolateral disc bulge or herniation of the disc in posterolateral aspect and that is the aspect where herniation of the disc or disc bulge is more commonly seen that is because of the less support by the posterior longitudinal ligament and repetitive activity of this flexion 
is going to stretch and compress the uh, annulus fibrosus region of the posterior longitudinal ligament. So what happens over here? This is the annulus fibrosus. <clears throat> it gets compressed and compressed. It cannot withstand the force. Finally, your disc and the nucleus pulposus get bulged out to one region and it can result in disc bulge. So one reason for that is the low tensile strength or less strength of the posterior longitudinal ligament in the spine. So this is all about the anterior and longitudinal ligaments. If you are a student, I would I would I would ask you to just study this by drawing two columns. Just draw two columns, right anterior longitudinal ligament, right posterior longitudinal ligament. C2 to sacrum to C2, C2 to sacrum. Two fibers, two fibers. Superficial, deep. Superficial, deep. Flexion, extension. Similarly, you can compare and study. Then that is easy. That is why I call this, uh, or we can call it as two counterparts, uh, anterior and uh, posterior longitudinal ligaments. Uh, am I right? Okay, and now we move on to the next ligament complex or next ligament that is a ligamentum flavum. That is the ligamentum flavum. What is that? That is a ligamentum flavum. That is a third ligament because anterior and posterior longitudinal ligament constitute first and second ligament even though we discuss them as the longitudinal ligament. So that is the ligamentum flavum. The ligamentum flavum is a thick elastic ligament. That is important thing. It is a thick elastic ring. One of the most elastic ligament of the spine is ligament of flavum. That is again a question. A ligamentum flavum. And what you see in the ligamentum flavum, this ligamentum flavum will attach to the lamina of the spine. This ligamentum flavum attaches the lamina of the spine. That means the posterior aspect of the vertebral canal. The anterior aspect was formed by the posterior longitudinal. So this becomes a posterior aspect of the vertebral canal. So the ligamentum flavum is a thick elastic fibrous or elastic ligament which links lamina to lamina. So successive vertebras lamina to lamina will be linked with the help of this uh, what you call the what you call the posterior longitudinal sorry the uh, ligamentum flavum so you can see from here in this diagrams uh, sorry in this uh, vertebra you have here is the lamina so lamina of this vertebra will be linked to the lamina of this one and it will be linked to the successive lamina with the help of a ligamentum flavum and the important thing that you should note down is that it is elastic the orientation is from uh, the c2 to sacrum the orientation is same as the posterior longitudinal ligaments C2 to sacrum. Now, I told you that the ligamentum flavum is an elastic ligament. The elasticity of the ligamentum flavum serves some important function. It's not just simply it became, it was created elastic, but it has two crucial functions. First function is that when this ligament is elastic, what is going to happen? This ligament is going to produce some sort of resistance or some sort of compression to the vertebral body. When vertebral body is getting some sort of compression these are linking the lamina to my lamina like my fingers so when they are compressed like this they are elastic in nature what can happen is that uh, what can happen is that uh, this ligament can produce some compression to the intervertebral disc that compression can enable disc to be become stiffer disc can become stiffer when it becomes stiff it can resist more amount of compressive load. So that is one of the most crucial function of ligamentum flavum. The second function or second role played by its elasticity is that usually the ligaments can buckle off when there is an opposite motion which is this restraining. So what happens if that ligamentum flavum is buckled off from here? It can damage your vertebral canal and the spinal cord. So the elastic nature prevents the ligamentum flavum from buckling off. The elastic nature prevents the ligamentum flavum from buckling off. The ligamentum flavum is having the role similar to posterior longitudinal ligament. They are going to restrict the flexion and they are slack in extension. So these are the important aspects of ligamentum flavor. Remember, even if you, whenever you hear this name, ligamentum flavor, 
one. Remember, they are the elastic ones. They are having the orientation same as that of the posterior longitudinal ligament. And that elasticity in the human body is serving some function. First one, they increase the pressure of the intervertebral disc or compression in the intervertebral disc and help enable the intervertebral disc to withstand greater amount of force. At the same time, it will prevent the buckling of the, of the ligament, which is very crucial in protection of this very delicate structure. Ligament of flavor are structures which are seen associated with the lamina of the vertebral column. Elastic lamina, L, L, flavum, L. So you can remember in that manner, okay, lamina of the vertebral column. They resist the flexion like the posterior longitudinal ligament and are slack in extension. Usually what happens in a uh, ligament and flavum is that even in extension it was not going to be slack because it's always elastic in nature. So not like the posterior longitudinal ligament, this one will have always some sort of tension because of that elastic nature and that is advantages to the body. And now we proceed on to the two other ligaments which are also related to each other because let us study through relationship that is the interspinous ligament, interspinous ligament and supraspinous ligament. I think when I am telling the name itself, you might get the hint that there's a, these are the inter and supraspinous ligament. So where is it located? Definitely spinous, spinous. That means these ligaments are associated with the spinous process of the vertebra. These ligaments are associated with the spinous processes of the vertebra. For example, in this vertebral vertebra, there is a ligament which connects this spinous process. For example, just I am let uh, just exaggerating that gap between them. There is a ligament which connect in this space that is the between the spinous processes of vertebra that ligament is known as the interspinous ligament. So the ligament which connects the in ligam vertebral columns the spinous process through each other is known as the interspinous process. Then what about supraspinous process, so spinous ligament, these are connecting the tip of the spinous process over here these are connecting the tips of the spinous process. so the interspinous ligament are the ligaments that connects the spinous process of vertebra they are thick fibrous ligaments they are thick fibers or thick fibrous sheaths that connects the spinous process of vertebra okay this is seen in the posterior aspect this is seen along with the posterior longitudinal ligament and ligament and flavum. If it is seen posteriorly, which movement should it restrict? It restricts the flexion. It restricts the flexion. It restricts the flexion. Which one? The interspinous ligament as well as the supraspinous ligament that also resists the flexion. They prevent the separation of the spinous process. They prevent the separation of the spinous process. That is another function of the supraspinous and interspinous process. And you know that what do you mean by shear force? They are the translatory force, right now. So when there is this posterior shear force, this interspinous ligament, which is connected over here like this, prevents this posterior shear force. So interspinous ligament prevents the posterior shear force on the vertebral column or on the spinous process. So let me once again tell you about the interspinous and supraspinous. You can study by relating interspinous ligament attaches to the attaches the spinous process of vertebra. This attaches the tip of the spinous process. This is a thick fibrous sheath, whereas this is a cord like structure, very simple cord like structure. For example, this is the two spinous process, a cord like structure like this, that is the supraspinous ligament. And this is the interspinous ligament. Both of them restricts the motion known as 
flexion and they prevents the separation of the spinous process more correctly that role is played by the supraspinous ligament so supraspinous ligament is very important in preventing the separation of the spinous process that can be asked whereas the interspinous ligament prevents the posterior shear force the ligament that provides or prevents the posterior shear force of the vertebral column or the intervertebral disc or the spinous process is the interspinous ligament so this is all about the interspinous and this is all about the supraspinous now one more thing about the supraspinous is this ligament is very rich in mechanoreceptors so there can be pain and associated problems in uh, damage or pathology to the, uh, to the ligament and more importantly in these mechanoreceptors uh, what they can do is that they can recruit the spinous stabilizers there are a lot of spinal stabilizers and muscles like multifidus muscles so they can recruit this multifidus muscle if you are finding difficult to remember that point just forget that otherwise write down that supraspinous ligament uh, has a lot of mechanoreceptors which is going to stabilize or recruit uh, which is going to help in the recruitment of uh, spinal stabilizers like the multifidus muscle and then we have the last ligament to learn on this region that is the intertransverse ligament. And this finally the last ligament complex to discuss is the intertransverse ligament. As I told, tell the name, you can just figure out from the name where is it located. It is located between the transverse process. So how many transverse process can you see? You can see a transverse process in the right and left side. So this ligament will be present in the right and left side. So they are paired ligament. That is the difference between all other ligaments with the intertransverse ligament. Or which is the paired ligament in the spine complex that is the intertransverse ligament so intertransverse ligament are paired complex ligaments intertransverse ligament are paired ligaments in the spine and what is the role what is the role? Their role is different or their orientation of their inner transverse ligament is different in different regions. You need not remember about that. You have to remember the role. The role is different in different regions. For example, consider this, okay? Uh, now, uh, this is my right hand side and this is my left hand side, okay? Uh, now, when a person is bending to right side, okay when a person this is the right side okay and this is the left side when a person is bending to right side what happens to the ligament in that same side that ligament will become slack and compressed what happens to the opposite ligament it gets become stretched so when a person is a bending for example when i am bending to my right hand side my right hand side intertransverse ligament is going to be compressed whereas left hand side it is going to be stretched out so left side ligament gets stretched right side get compressed and slack so the left side is going to restrict my motion it is going to say that it is enough don't go on further whereas in right side it is slack and not doing any duty whereas if you go for the lateral bending to the left side definitely your right side ligaments are going to be stretched and left side is slack and loose and right side will restrict the motion that's all about the intertransverse ligament which are seen a paired ligament in the vertebral column attaching the transverse process to each other they have a various uh, they have a great deal of regional variability between the different regions of the spine and this ligament has another peculiarity is that when you do the opposite side move, movement the opposite side when you do the same side movement the opposite side ligaments are getting stretched and same side ligaments are getting loose for example right side lateral bending not these are uh, active in the lateral bending not in the flexion or extension because you know its orientation is in the lateral side so right side lateral bending left side ligaments are going to be stretched and right side is going to be slack and when there is a flexion injury, hyperflexion, I forgot to tell that point, this uh, spinous ligament are more prone to be uh, damaged or when there is hyperflexion injuries, it is a spinous ligament that is interspinous and supraspinous ligament which give off or fail easily. So this is uh, all about the ligaments of the spine. It was a vast discussion and you have a various set of ligaments but we covered it in the simple manner. You have to compare anterior longitudinal and posterior longitudinal. You make two columns, you can study it in one. You compare interspinous and supraspinous ligament, definitely you can make a column and study it.
Only you have to memorize and study the uh, ligament and phlebum and intertransverse ligament. Intertransverse, the word itself gives you the answer. The ligament and phlebum, always remember it's elastic and it has two points of uh, application that you have to write down. So I hope that video was clear with you. And if you like the video, don't forget to click like button and kindly subscribe to our channel.